Hi, I'm Tim Rubble, and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. Today, we're going to be focusing on the ArcDroid CNC Plasma that I've just set up on my custom-built water table. If you're new to this uh, series, um, I did a previous video on how to set up, calibrate, format the USB stick, and kind of uh, explain how I hooked up my uh, Everlast 62i uh, plasma cutter. So let's talk about this machine just as uh, we're coming into the shop. It's uh, in the morning right now. Yesterday I worked on um, my rock sliders for the Humvee. And what I'm trying to do on this piece is I'm trying to make a nice template that has a spot for the weld to go around it. So you can see I got this template trimmed up pretty, uh, pretty nice. So what I'm gonna do is now that I have a decent template, so I'm gonna walk this over here to the arc droid and take you through this process. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna cut that right there and I'm gonna take one of these magnets that I got and set this right here. And I think the force of this magnet is something like 20 pounds. Now I'll go over here to the back of the machine and there's a rocker panel in the uh, switch in the back. So I will turn this on. You can see that I have the stylus already attached and that's done through two little quick, next, quick disconnect clamps there. And then I have that plugged in right there. So the first thing I wanna do is I come over here to the, to the uh, user interface. Let's see if I can do this better without a glare. And I wanna hit the home button and that will home this so it knows where it's at. And when I look at the screen, I see this little green dot right there. And then you see this little uh, arc. That represents where the machine sits on the table and you can see where the pin's at. So what I'll basically do now is I'll go to trace. And then I'm gonna select this line right here. And I'm gonna go over here and grab my stylist. And I'm gonna pull this, and as I pull this, you can see the green dot moving on the screen to where I'm at. Now I'm kind of about where my start point is. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this knob counterclockwise, which makes this jog down. And I'm gonna jog it down right on top of that piece of cardboard. And I'm gonna move right about here. And where I start, I'm going to put a little mark just so I don't forget what I'm doing. And let's see if we can set this phone up. Do this all hokey with the user interface. See if that will stay in, stay in place. There we go. So what I want to do here, let's zoom out a little bit. All right. So this is all done in uh, real time, one take. So I'm gonna push this little button right here on this user interface. And that'll start the uh, track of what I'm trying to do. So uh, let's see if we can get this more in the picture. Move that back to there. It won't be as close, but basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push this button and then I'm going to try to do the straight lines straight. So I'll push another button here. And then on the corners, I'll do about every millimeter or so. And then I'll track over here. And what that looks like on this is kind of like this right now on the, uh, on the screen. And then I'll go around this corner. Work your way around your template. Trying to be as accurate as you can. And then when I get back to my mark here, I'm gonna double click. Well, let's try that again. There we go. 
And what that will do is that'll end up looking like this. Um, it'll say closed. And then you hit check. And then I'll hit save. And hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jog this up a little bit. And then I'm going to get out of here. Exit. And here again, I'm brand new to this uh, unit. I got about two hours on it. And you can see these are the cuts I've made. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit run with the stylus on it and see if I like what my trace looks like. So it's going to go down. It's going to touch off. And a little off there. But for what I'm doing on this part, that's going to be fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the stylus. Lift these clamps up. And this is kind of hard to do with one hand holding a cell phone and, and doing this. And this is actually pretty tight on here. All right. I'm going to have to use two hands, so excuse me really quick. Pulls right off. Now I'm going to put my torch head back on the machine. It slips in. And now I'm going to take my magnet out of the way. And boy, are these things tough. go get a pair of uh, pliers. All right, magnets out of the way. So let's talk about now what it's gonna take to cut. I'm gonna go over here and provide my plasma with air, check my gauge. We're good on air. This uh, routes directly up to, um, up and over to my plasma. But as this comes out of the machine, um, I come up to here and then I go through this water trap and I got some like um, scotch Bright pads in there to collect the water and go down to the bottom grains. And I, I found that this works really well as a water separator. So it does all of that, then it comes back out and goes through another water separator and then goes up and comes back over here to the machine. So we have our air that's set up. We're on, and then we'll come to the back of the uh, plasma cutter. We'll turn that on. Now we'll go to the front, and we'll check and see where we're at. Now here again, I'm using whatever the standard factory settings were on uh, this. Let's see, I think we hit tune. So those, those are the settings I'm using right now for uh, this and that's just what came in and you can tune these um, for your for your needs so what I'm gonna do there is say okay and we see the little torch uh, icon here now I've moved this torch around and everything so I just want to make sure that the torch is off I want to hit run and see if where it's gonna cut is gonna be a good spot in this material and I have enough material and I've placed it well and it looks like that's gonna work so basically I'm gonna go down here and turn that on once again I'll show you my settings on the plasma I got the air set at uh, 79 psi 10.5 for the post flow and I'm running the full 60 amps uh, this is uh, 3 16th material and I'm just gonna come over here and hit run. very, very little, and 
now we'll come over here where it counts. It's a little warm, warm, so let me just do a quick little dunk. A lot of times I'll run the water just a little higher. Um, but we'll take this over here and we're gonna do our uh, figuring out if that's gonna be a decent part or not. And we'll lay that in place. And pretty much, that's exactly what I'm looking for, for a place for the weld to lay in there. And of course, I'm gonna um, sand all of this uh, flush anyway, but I just kinda want a spot for the weld bead to go so it's just a nice looking part. So in 10 minutes and 42 seconds right now on this video, I've set this up where I've come out here and I've cut a custom part um, from a template drew it, set it up, cut it, and even filmed it. Now, taking the filming out of this, this probably would have been more of like a five minute process. And that's what makes this little machine really um, awesome in my opinion, is this is a lot of stuff that us fabricators do that I might not have wanted to take the time to uh, draw up back in the day. Um, I might have wanted just to uh, figure out how to cut it real quick and then tune it up on the uh, the disc sander and get something on there and get, but this makes it so easy to do um, and duplicate parts. Now, you know, I'm doing two rock sliders, so I did this one separate just so we could uh, see how I did that. Now, that's not a complex part. We can do stuff like bolt patterns um, and you can actually use the user interface to go ahead and design a part off of G-code or off of numbers. Or once again, you can do a more complex part off of Fusion 360 sheet cam. Um, and Inkscape is another thing that I just started playing with that seems like that's gonna work really well for writing out font and arcing things and uh, building what you want. Maybe they import something and draw over it. So. Um, this little machine uh, is 2500 bucks that I bought online. I have no connection with them, no affiliation with them. Um, the same thing with Everlast. I'm in this whole thing right here about 4500 bucks, And I feel like um, that's affordable for most people that's in reach. Um, for the guys not knowing how to fund this, if you have $4,500 worth of credit, you can probably put that on a credit card get the machine in, build your table, get set up. Probably gonna need a welder, um, but if you're into fab, this is what you what you do, the, the path that you're choosing. Um, and then you can put an ad on Craigslist, hey, CNC cutouts, and um, not only will that um, give you a better learning curve, um, you know, you'll take on the more simple tasks, which you're gonna get paid, and you're gonna pay yourself back for this machine. And I feel like if you were hungry, you could probably in two months make that $4,500 back um, in a good good market. And I've always found to be uh, with CNC Plasma, um, it's always been a decent market for me. Uh, it's just how much I want to deal with people and you know go down that road. But uh, things to think about. Um, I give this Arctroid a uh, I'm a, a like a nine five. Um, it's not a perfect solution. But for somebody like myself that doesn't want to take a whole lot of time doing a bunch of programming to make a simple part, this makes um, working in the shop fast and no excuse wise why you wouldn't want to make a part uh, on a CNC plasma because the programming piece of this is a piece of cake utilizing that the stylus. That's a game changer. That For me, that makes this whole thing a real nice, easy cutting solution. Um, and accuracy seems to be totally adequate with what I'm uh, working with on this. Um, highly recommend it. That's gonna be it for now. If you guys uh, haven't liked and subscribed, please do. I appreciate each each and every one of you. If you have questions, please hit me up down below. Um, here to help, um, I'm a retired Air Force machinist welder, um, off-road fabricator, and I'm always busy uh, building some projects. Uh, this is the Humvee Overland build that's going to have a high-low uh, camper on it. Um, going to be a pretty neat program. Um, my last real major build that I'm going to do. And, of course, this one's uh, for me. Um, but questions, comments, or any of that type of uh, genre, um, we're going to cover that. That's going to be it for now. I'm Tim Robel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you here next time.